Hello everyone, good morning, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and craft table. I am so glad that you have joined me this morning. And thank you so much for spending your time. If you are new, welcome to you. I am so glad that you have found me. And um, today's project is actually one I am super excited about. Now granted, I know I'm always excited about the crafts, but I'm extra excited about today's craft because this is something that I saw um, at, a, at the store and I thought, hmm, I can totally make that. So I just basically took a picture of the item and decided to come home and give it a go. Now, um, I am actually trying out a brand new mic today, and I really hope that you will like the sound quality of the new mic. So hopefully it is doing great. If so, don't forget to um, give me a smiley face down in the comments. You can just put a little smiley face emoji down in there and let me know that this quality is good. Um, thought I would try out one in particular, and then if my audience doesn't like this mic in particular, I have another one that I'm um, looking at trying out as well. So your feedback is greatly appreciated. Okay, let's talk about this project. I went to Walmart yesterday with my husband. We were getting a couple of things, and of course I needed some, um, I needed like some glue, so we went down the craft aisle, and so as a teacher, I go down the school supplies, office supplies aisle, no matter what. Like every time I go to any store, we have to go look at the school supplies aisle because, you know, I'm kind of obsessed with school supplies. Anyway, kind of the same thing with the craft aisle. So I was walking along and I happened to notice a little package that was, you know, hanging on one of those little strips. So it really wasn't on a peg, it wasn't, you know, on a shelf. It was just one of those extra little strips. They hang with things that they want you to, oh, hey, that's fun, and then you buy extra even though it wasn't on the list. Well, I was looking at it and it had two lip balm holders that were made out of faux leather and a little keychain at the top, and I thought, oh my goodness, those are so cute. And then I realized Mm, I don't need to pay for that. I already have leather and little rings and lip balm. I can totally make those myself. So that is exactly what I decided to do. So I took a picture of the package and uh, ironically, I, they, there was a ruler type thing that was nearby. So I grabbed the ruler and I was measuring like the length and the width. Um, so I took a picture of everything and then I came home and got out my supplies and experimented. And this is the first try. Like I didn't even have to throw away any um, faux leather. It actually worked perfectly the first time. I am just so pleased that the materials were, were so um, conducive to this project. So let's talk about what you need to make a project like this. Well, first thing you're gonna need is some faux leather. Now, I purchased a package of faux leather from Amazon. So it's just a package that looks like this, and it literally just says uh, 20 pieces, eight and a half by 12, random, and then it's got the little ellipsis, so obviously that's faux leather, for bows and earrings DIY crafts. And, um, I've talked about this package before on the channel in the other faux leather crafts I've done, but basically you just literally get a random supply of faux leather. So I've made some bookmarks and I've made some cord keepers and those were super fun, easy, very beginner friendly. So check those out. I will link those videos here in that top corner for you and also down in the description. So anyway, I chose a faux leather uh, design. This one's gonna be for my daughter. I don't think she would appreciate Buffalo Check because she is a teenager and this is really not her style. It is definitely more uh, my style, so I'll just have that. But this is kind of like a fashion, you know, it has a Versace and all this on it. Anyway, 
So faux leather, you need one of those. Then depending on the machine that you are using, um, you can use this project with the Joy, the Explore series, the Maker series. You know, it, this is not um, uh, only for like one of the bigger machines. Anyway, so you'll need a mat. I'm going to use my Strong Grip mat. I happen to have one for my Joy, so I am going to use my Cricut Joy this morning. And um, if I were using my Maker, I would only be using my Standard Grip mat because I don't have a Strong Grip for my Maker. And that's okay because if you're using a Standard Grip mat, you absolutely just go around the perimeter of your faux leather with some painter's tape just to make sure that it's staying in place and I actually also put the faux leather onto the mat in a very particular way to help with it sticking but with a strong grip mat I found that I just put a tiny little piece at the top and at the bottom just to make sure that the, the faux leather did not move it worked perfectly not not even one millimeter of movement happened so You'll need your mat, some painter's tape. The next thing you'll need is obviously some scissors because you'll need to cut down your um, faux leather, your brayer to brayer it down, and then you will need some kind of ring. Now you can buy a package of keychain rings, and I don't have a, well, I do have a package of keychain rings. I can't locate them. I have no idea where they are, but I do have binder rings. So being a teacher, I have like a ton of these things. And um, what I did is I decided to use a binder ring. And the and one thing that's good about it is that it's easy for smaller fingers. Okay, so um, I just threw that on here. She can just open this and clip it to her backpack or her lunch bag or whatever she wants to do with it. And um, I can do the same with my little purse. But this is just a binder ring and if you don't want to use these you could certainly use normal keychain rings that you can get usually you can get them uh kind of in your in your um uh i would say kind of probably near the jewelry i don't know i'd have to think about it because it's been a while since i bought my package but you'll need one of those and then you will need a glue gun and i am i tested out my brand new glue gun that I got today and wow I'm super impressed so I'll share that with you later and then just some glue sticks so the package that I saw these in it had it started here and went all the way around the perimeter they used obviously a sewing machine so you if you are someone with a sewing machine and you're a sewer you can totally sew these and um they will, you know, they'll be great. So if you don't have a sewing machine, glue gun works just fine. As you can, as you can see, this is working great. All right, so let's go ahead, head over to Design Space. I'm gonna show you how I created the um, image for cutting for this, and then we'll get started with getting the materials prepped, cut out, and assembled. Here in Design Space, I just simply pulled up a new project canvas and I have labeled it as Lip Balm Keychain. Don't forget, I'll be linking this file specifically for you down in the description so you don't have to recreate it um, on your own if you don't want to, but you are certainly welcome to do so. Um, you actually, I'm actually thinking about making some that are shaped, um, you know, like maybe it's, um, like a little fox face or something, and then we could put some iron-on vinyl or some uh, regular, yeah, iron-on vinyl onto the faux leather. So that will be a forthcoming video because those would make great birthday or Christmas gifts. So I'll be making that soon. And then um, this one's just plain. Now I did not add any um, iron-on vinyl to the surface of the faux leather this time. I just wanted to make the keychain and make sure that um, it worked for the lip balm. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I did is I went over to shapes and instead of the, um, the right angle square, I pulled up this square here, well rectangle, and it has 
kind of more rounded edges as you can see. And what I did is I unlocked the um, measurements and I did one point, um, 1.5 wide, so it's, it's uh, one and a half inches wide, and then I did 3.75 for the height, okay, and then I locked it. So this will be the top or bottom half, and then I came over here to my layers panel and I duplicated it um, two more times, okay. So I actually have a total of three of these. And one of these is going to become this middle joining section here. So we're gonna have a top, we're gonna have a bottom, we're gonna have a joining section. All right, so let me move this kind of right here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm lining it up just along this line right here as a point of focus. And then I'm going to move this one over here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my third one and I'm going to resize this. Now this little inset here, well, I have to unlock it. And so this is, I did 0.75 and then I did about 1.25. Okay, so it's really small like that and I locked it back so it wouldn't change. And then I brought it over here and I just made let me zoom in for you a little bit. Okay, so the bottom one, let's say the bottom one is at, well, let's do it this way. I'm gonna place this little one along this solid line there. Then I'm gonna bring this one up two lines. So here it is at the seam, and then I'm gonna go up one and up two, all right, and then at the top, it's along this line right here, so I'm going to place the top portion two below that. That's just what I chose. To be honest, it, I chose that kind of spacing at random, and it actually worked out well. Then I selected all. When I selected all, I went up to a line, and then I did center horizontally. Okay, so that pulls it all in to get everything centered. And then I came down here to the bottom of my layers panel to the combine. So just a word of note, if they're grayed out, obviously you cannot use that feature at that time. And then if they're darkened like this, they're available. So I clicked on combine and I went to weld. And then this is going to make one cohesive piece just like this. Okay. The next thing I did is I need the little slit for the lip balm to go into. So I went back to shapes and I went over here to the line and then this one, I'm going to change that to a 0.9. Okay. And so that brings it down to there. And then I do, it's not going to work if it's vertical like that. So I came over here to rotate and I changed it to 90 degrees and it just moves at 90 degrees perpendicular. And then, so the bottom of my um, faux leather thing, it's about half an inch. Okay, so this is about half an inch right here. And then probably another... Um, from there, I would say another two inches, so about right here, but that's totally fine. This is how I made it the last time. I think the, for this one, I'm just going to move it up just a smidge like this. So it's basically three inches from the bottom, okay, so a half inch here and then a whole inch, one more inch, and then another half inch, roughly, okay? And then I'm gonna select everything again. I'm gonna go to align, center horizontally. Okay, so now everything is still selected, everything is centered horizontally. And then I'm gonna come down here to the bottom of my layers panel and I'm gonna click on attach. 
And this is going to make everything stick together so when I go to my make screen here in a minute that I won't have things all over the place. Okay, and you can see here in my layers panel, and, and I'll just have one, when you open the, um, when you open the file, I'll just have the one, and I just have a reminder that the little line is 0.9, so 9 tenths of an inch, and then here's the welded design. Then I'm going to go to, I'm going to hide this one. This is the one I made earlier. This one, the line is a little bit above where I had it last time. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one and see how I like that. So the next thing that you will do to make your keychain is you're going to hit make screen or make button really. And then you're going to get your mat. Now uh, you're going to need the 12 inch mat. So if you don't have a 12 inch mat for your joy, you would need to make it on your maker. Um, because it is longer than the six and a half. Now you could try and uh, just resize, like you would slice off maybe the top and bottom, make it a little bit smaller and put it on your um, six and a half inch mat. I just don't know, um, I didn't do that, so I, I, don't, I can't attest to how the project comes out. So it's on our mat. Okay, everything looks good. I can see everything's lined up. I have my little cut line right here for the lip balm. And I'm gonna click on continue. And we're gonna connect to our joy. Once you're connected to your joy, if I already have it bookmarked, but if you don't have it bookmarked for leather, so you're gonna go to browse all materials. And then you can just type in leather up here at the top. And you're gonna see leather, faux leather paper thin. And this is the only option for the Joy. Now, if you're using one of the other machines, you're going to have more options for faux leather. And um, paper thin works fine. If the leather is a little thicker, um, then you would probably want something like um, the Genuine Leather. It has always worked well for me when I'm using my Maker. If you're using um, the Joy, it only gives you the paper thin. So click on that hit done okay and then I always do more pressure when I'm doing faux leather whether it's paper thin or genuine leather I always select the more pressure uh, as far as the joy is concerned it will cut with your fine point blade um, and uh, now if the leather is too thick it may not cut um, so if this is a pretty thin sheet but if you have a really super thick sheet, um, it might not cut on the joy. And then you would use your deep, um, your deep point blade in your maker to cut much thicker layer of, of leather. Okay, so then you would um, get your mat ready, load the material into the machine, and then when prompted, you would click on go, which is down here in the corner. Let's head over to the overhead camera let me show you how I prepare the leather onto the mat. Then I will cut and we'll get the project assembled. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut down my faux leather. And the keychain, the whole thing, the whole welded thing is about eight and a half. So I'm just going to cut here at about nine. Okay. And let's see. Let me go ahead and let that be. Okay, so this is going to be my keychain. Now again, I'm using my Joy today. You can use any of the machines. I'm gonna use the strong grip mat. Okay, so when I do faux leather, I always take the faux leather and I turn it over so that this felt ish micro suede ish i think it's really a felt but so that this side is facing up toward me and that the leather is side down so just kind of like when you um do your uh, iron on vinyl and you put the shiny side down you know the pretty side so i'm going to do the same thing and then i always you know just sprayer it just really quickly and then all right uh, I'm one of those, you know, I kind of over adhese, which is totally fine. But 
I still, with the Strong Grip Mat, I still put painter's tape. So I have a little bit of painter's tape at the top. If you're using the standard grip mat, you absolutely have to use some painter's tape. And I would go all the way around the edge. But since I have the strong grip mat, I'm just going to put a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom. And this just makes sure, you know, because these materials add up. They're expensive. So it's just really safe to do it this way. And I have just found success with it. So got this all ready. And then here's my little joy, bring it in. I'm gonna open that up. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to load this in my joy and then I will follow the prompts on the screen. It will, it will measure everything and then it will ask me to click go and then it will cut the material for me. This is finished now, and you'll notice that it made two passes as it went around. Now, if it was on my maker, I could always hit the play button again and resend it through to cut if I needed to. Because it is on the Joy, uh, the Joy makes you unload. Like, I haven't figured out how to just automatically um, have it cut again. So. I'm going to, I hit the unload, and then I'm just going to pull this up and make sure that it did cut. And you can see that's a really nice cut right there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the mat from the joy and close that and move that aside. And then I'm just going to peel this up off of my strong grip mat. And I can see that the slit is nicely cut. I am going to remove this tiny little piece of painter's tape that is from the top. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and remove the faux leather from the mat, remove the painter's tape. I don't want this sitting on here too long because um, I want to make sure that my mat is nice and clean and ready for the next time. So I'm just taking my large scraper and I don't know if you can see, it just... When you do anything, you kind of, like the faux leather, leaves a little bit of fuzz, not a big deal. I really only use this strong grit mat for things like faux leather and um, the uh, metallic sheets. And then I'm just going to put this back on here. All right, so now my mat is going to stay nice and clean and super sticky. All right, so next we are going to start getting this assembled so that it'll look like that. I'm going to cover up that little shiny spot. That one light. I can never get that light to cooperate. Okay, so here is this. Let me grab my glue gun and the ring. Now it's time to assemble our project. The first thing that I would do just, you know, to be sure is to make sure that your lip balm fits in the slot. And the way I have it sized, it should fit just fine. Okay, so this is just a normal lip balm, um, you know, chapstick, Burt's Bees, whatever. Okay, so the next thing is to think about is what kind of ring are you using? If you're using a binder ring like this, where you literally have the capability of sliding it into the loop, then you actually don't have to put this on right away. But if you were using a regular keychain style um, loop, then you would need to put the material through here like so. Okay, and then that way you, it would already be on there and you wouldn't have to like pry it open and then try and get it threaded through. So that would be with the binder clip. 
Okay, so something I just remembered is I actually picked these up. These were literally in the same aisle right behind me. This is um, in the jewelry section. And these are just a, it's called circle clasp. And I don't know if these will fit or not, but if they do, this would be another great option. I found these on clearance. So these are like this. Okay, so you've got the ring and then it just pushes in like this. And I really like this design the most. Now, what, I, what you can do if you have something smaller like that is just, I'm just gonna roll the faux leather and I'm going to just stick that through the hole right there. And then let's see how that's gonna look. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, it's a little bunchy. I would have to make this width here a lot skinnier. So the question is, would she mind if I gave it to her like that? Oh, I just don't know. My other option is I could quickly just trim off just a fraction with my scissors. I could just come in and trim off and get that uh, to be a little more fitted, which probably isn't a bad idea. Let me um, pause. I'm gonna trim this down manually with my scissors, and I think I am gonna try and utilize this little ring instead of the binder ring. Okay, I'm back and this worked really good. So if you find yourself like me where you notice, oh, hey, I have this and I wanna see if it'll work. Here's what I did to trim this down. So the first thing I did is I folded the leather like this and I just used my fine detail scissors that I use for card making and I just did a little slit here, like super tiny and then I did it again over here. Then I opened it back up, folded it like I was gonna go ahead and put it together, okay? And then I turned it around like this. And then this time where, you know, where the edge end of that little cut was, I just went in that far and I cut this way. And I did the same thing on this side and then I have these two tiny little pieces that I cut off. So this now will fit this really nicely. I do see one tiny little spot. Let me just kind of clean up that edge. Not that that edge will be noticeable, but... Okay, so then, now because this part here doesn't open. I do have to put this on before I hot glue. Or if you're going to sew, you have to put it on before you sew. Okay. I'm going to flip that around. There we go. And then I would suggest holding it in your hand and just like, well, you know, what way does it open? Is that more comfortable or is that more comfortable? I guess it really doesn't matter. But now you can see where it fits a whole lot better. You know, it's not all bunched up in there. So that was a good call. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do, let me move this. Um, I'm so excited. This is my brand new glue gun. Now I have a cordless glue gun that I got at Hobby Lobby, and I really like it. It works really, really well. It's just a cheaper one. I don't even know that it has a name brand or anything. It's just a little bitty cordless, you know, it plugs in, heats up, you can unplug it. So I love this. This was a great buy. And then this I recently got um, through Cricut on their website. It was on sale for ten dollars and I had a like I had a special code so I got this like this was a steal um, I don't and I had free shipping because I'm an access member so um, anyway this is really nice when I saw these I was like oh I don't know 
But I'm not really, you know, saying to buy all the Cricut stuff. I'm just saying if you're in the market for a new glue gun and these go on sale, you might want to consider these. This stuff, this just comes out like butter. And uh, anyway, this is great. And then this is just a little silicone pad. It's um, nubby on one side, which, you know, is good for cleaning brushes or stamps. And then this side, I'm just using just to keep the hot glue off of my um, glass mat. And of course it doesn't stick to that. Anyway, moving on back to the project. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna start right here. Now I'm not going to glue the, the inner tab. I'm just gonna start right here. And I'm gonna do a little at a time. And I'm just gonna use a little bead Okay, you know, I don't need it to be super globby. Okay, and then I'm going to line that up really well. And then I'm going to press that down. And it's okay if the glue comes out because, um, you know, I use enough that it'll come out. And then you can press it down along the seam and get rid of any excess but it'll just kind of seal it up and it of course it cools almost instantly okay and then you literally can just pull the hot glue off of the edge like this you could also grab your true control knife and go along um, so the the more it's cooled off, you'll probably need to use the knife, which is why I have that in my little supply box. Okay, so I'm just going to take my time and I'm just going to go around the entire perimeter. And I do use probably a good, you know, a good eighth of an inch for the bottom just to make sure that it is well adhered or, you know, stuck together down there. The sides are a little more delicate and I found that I don't need to be super lobby along the sides. Okay, so there's all there is to the gluing part. And um, I'm gonna grab my true control knife and I'm just gonna kind of go around the edge. I think I have like a tiny little spot here and there where the glue is a little, um, you know, it comes out. And so I'm just gonna kind of go along here and trim that up. Okay, if you um, kind of wipe it away pretty quickly after it comes out, then you don't have to do something like that. But having glue come out through the edge is actually a good thing because it really does help seal the edges. Okay, so that side's great. Oh, it's this side right here. So now, we got all this let me get this little bit of glue off right here coming out the edge is is actually a pretty good thing all right and i'll take care of those in a minute so now this is done and it looks beautiful like i'm i am so excited about this tiny little project super fast super easy um it took me longer on this video than it actually takes in real life so when I'm explaining things I slow down a lot and I just slide that down in there okay. and there it is can actually I could actually um, even make with having moved this up a little bit 
I can actually make this a little shorter. So I may, um, in design space, I will, I will, um, I will actually make this a little shorter, probably about, oh, about an eighth of an inch shorter so that you'll, you'll have that. And, um, I can even cut this off and glue the bottom down if I want to, but there's one and here's the other. And I think I still, I think I even have another little lip balm. We have lip balms all over the house. One in every bag, one in, you know, one by my chair, one in my craft space, one in the kitchen, uh, one in the car. We have lip balms everywhere. So this is the project that is finished. You can see, and you can always choose the kind of ring that suits your needs best. And these are just super fun, easy, and they make great gifts. Not only are they functional. Okay, well that is our really cute project for today. These turned out so well. And um, I really hope that you found this tutorial was super helpful and inspiring. I will be linking the project file down in the description as well as a link for the materials that were used in this project today. If you found this video helpful or informative, inspiring in any way, don't forget to hit that like button. It definitely pushes the video out to more people who could find this uh, helpful just the same and it really helps our channel grow. Don't forget to tell me down in the comments with a little smiley emoji if this uh, microphone was better. I'm just testing out a new mic today. So leave me a smiley face emoji and let me know that um, it was better. Also, uh, let me know what kind of faux leather crafts you would like to see come to the channel. So I will be linking the videos for the cord keepers and the other little bookmarks that we've done. And now this is faux leather project number three. If you're not already a subscriber, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when new content is posted. But I want you to enjoy what is remaining of your summer days. And until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day. And as always, happy crafting.